Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we are going through my mid-year favorites. I cannot believe six months of the year have already gone by. So I did wanna keep this brief. So I have like my top favorite and a runner-up for pretty much every category, and I do have timestamps so you can check out you know, specific categories. Let's go ahead and get started. Now for primers and base products like that, I actually don't have a new face primer that is my favorite. My favorite for several years is has been the Surat Perfectionist Primer. It's still number one. I do have, you know, a couple more that I love and use all the time. The Euphoria Pre-Game Primer when my skin's feeling dry and I want some extra moisture or for brightening the Clay to Poe Brightening Enhancer Veil, but the Surat is my number one. None of these are new items. For everyday eye primer, again, not new, it's a Viseart eye primer, this has been my favorite, but my runner-up favorite eye primer is actually these Cream Tone Touch Eyes from Suku. So they were limited edition and they came out with two of them. I actually prefer this deeper one, shade 113, but this one here, 112, is also like a great everyday primer. So it's kind of like this like putty-like cream consistency. It works really well underneath, you know, different shadows. It doesn't like crease. And I just really like the effect that it gives. This darker shade 113 really makes the shadows pop. I actually have it on underneath my eyeshadow right now. I'm using the Isamaya Industrial 2.0 palette and I have 113 on as a base, just very, very lightly. So you're not getting a lot of color. So looking at the cream shadows, we have 112 and 113. Moving on to concealers. We had a lot of great concealers that came out this year, and this one was really, it was pretty challenging to narrow it down. My number one is the Valentino. This is the very Valentino concealer. You have six and a half milliliters of product. And you know, I absolutely love this one. I wear shade LIGR2, and it's fantastic. It's a, a great like medium texture or medium coverage brightening concealer. So, you know, it's great for under the eyes. My runner up is the Chanel Sublimage. So that's this one here. And I wear shade two in this. It has a one year shelf life and we have 10 grams of product in here. So it's a little bit of a larger packaging because it does come in this kind of jar style. You might want to decant some into a smaller container so that, you know, you decrease the risk of contaminating the entire entire product so it's definitely something worth considering because it's an expensive concealer i just love how it feels more like skincare you're getting coverage but it feels more like a moisturizer so it really sinks in beautifully of course i had some other great ones that i really wanted to include here but those are my top two for foundations we have the clay to po cushion and you know, when I first tried this, I was like, mm, I don't know if this can beat my favorite Sisley cushion. I still absolutely love the Sisley cushion. The Clay de Poe though is a better color match for me. And so between the two of them, I have to say they're, they're pretty tied for me, but this is definitely my favorite foundation that's come out this year for 2023 that I've tried. This is what I have on my skin right now. It's really easy to use, blends out beautifully and you know, it's just it's just a quick, easy go-to product. My runner-up is actually the new Ritual Defeat Three Drop Weightless Serum Foundation. Now they finally offer samples on their website for purchase, so just something to note. And this gives you full coverage with fewer than three drops, really. And it's gonna give you this beautiful, like luminous but not greasy look on your skin. It's just a really beautiful product. So this is my runner-up. For brows, the new Victoria Beckham Brow Blade, uh, or Baby Blade, I keep calling it the Brow Blade, but it's a Baby Blade. I like shade taupe. We have one side with a spoolie, and the other side has the actual pencil, and I love this. I mean, it's a total game changer for me for my brows. Um, yeah, this is definitely my favorite. So from there, the runner up is actually the Suku eyeshadow or eyebrow palette, which is not a new product, but it's new to me. So with the Suku product, this one here, it's called the Suku 3D Control Eyebrow and I have shade 02. And you can see that we have kind of this like creamy putty like texture here. Let me go ahead and swatch these two. 
and it does come with like a little like brush that you can use you can see these aren't going to swatch very well because they're really meant to be used more with um you know like a stiff brush to kind of pencil in you can't really see that too well but you do have kind of a brow highlight shade here as well that's it works great so the little utensil that comes with you've got this angled brush and then you have this fluffier brush which i use for the brow highlight absolutely wonderful product i love having two different shades in there to mix and match give you a little bit more lifelike texture and color now as for mascaras definitely some great mascaras out this year beautiful colors we've got the blues and burgundies that we've seen a lot and i love seeing those colors but my two favorite formulas are not new so we have the sisley so stretch followed by the Syrah Noir Lash Tint. Still hoping they make a brand new <laughs> lash tint. But uh, these are my two favorites and they're not new. So let's go ahead and move on to blush. Now my favorite blush, hands down, is the Suku Melting Powder Blush. This one here is Limited Edition 105. This formula is fantastic. It's not a new formula, but it has just been discontinued. This is what I have on right now. I don't need a highlight with it. You can see it's a beautiful lavender shade with pink in there, kind of like a lavender pink. Really beautiful. I absolutely love this. It is one of my favorite shades. I use it at least once a week still. Now my runner up, and this was really hard. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to put the Armani in here or the Violette FR cream blushes, but I wanted to go with this one. This is another one that I reach for all the time. It's the Bobbi Brown Brightening Blush. This one here is in Blushed Peach. I personally like to mix all of the shades together and it's just a really beautiful formula. These are limited edition. I have to say I really like them. So they're shimmery. There's definitely a sheen to them for both of these, um, but it's not glittery. And I think that's really a key distinction for me. Moving on to highlighter, another tough category, but there weren't as many choices here. So for me, we've got the Hermes in number one, Rose Atacama. This, I, again, I like to mix all the shades here for this. I absolutely love this shade. You can make this very subtle or you can make it a little bit more blingy. This size is going to last forever. I really like it. My runner up is actually the YSL New Halo Tint Highlighter. I have the shade New Rosy Quartz. And let's see here, let's put this right here. It's just a beautiful shade. You can see that Rosy Quartz is a pretty good name. It's kind of like rosy, you know, it's got a, like a touch a touch of like a champagne, almost a champagne taupe in there mixed with some rosy pink, but it's still, it's a pretty neutral pink. I really love, love both of these. So th these are going to be my two for my mid-year favorites. Now I do want to just mention one other highlight. This is not from this year, but the Tom Ford Peach Light is another go-to for me. I use this particularly this top shade all the time. So I did want to include that because it's definitely a favorite of mine uh, that I use frequently, but it's not from this year. So I didn't put it in the top two position. Likewise, another one would be the Clay de Poe highlighters. I really like those as well. But again, those are from last year. <laughs> now for powders, I haven't purchased too many new powders this year. Um, I would have to say though that my favorite is going to be the Sisley Blur Expert in the new light shade. So I really like this. You can't even really tell that I've used it yet. It's pretty firmly pressed and you know, it's just a nice light powder. You can get a blurring effect. You put this on under foundation. I think it's fantastic. So that's, you know, my, my favorite. For runners up, I had a few other powders I purchased and I like them. My runner up in this case would be the Jones Road powders. So this is the Jones Road powder. You've got great packaging here with this, um, you know, it divide. It, it's a little slide <laughs> essentially. So you can choose how many holes you want to uncover and so forth. So you can control how much powder comes out. I love that. The powder itself I think is a great basic powder. However, I do want to mention that this is not going to be like the most special powder ever. It's a great basic. And so if we're, you know, there were a few other powders I tried out this year that were new to me or like new shades and so forth. And I have to say this beat them out. For example, the Chantecaille powder that came out earlier this year, you know, the newer version of their Blur Expert powder. 
Uh, yeah, so this beat those out, but if I had to go with, you know, most used for me, my next choice would actually be the Suku Oil Rich Glow Loose Powder in the Lavender or one of the Givenchy Prism Libra Powders. So those would technically be my next favorites like overall. Next, let's move on to bronzers. My number one, this is pretty new here. This is the Surat in Soleil Claire. I absolutely love this formula and I love this shade. I just think it is fantastic. It's, you know, this and the Gucci Zero One are my two very favorite bronzers. But for my runner up, I wanted to mention the Hermes bronzer. This is shade one to Tori. This is not the greatest color. So for me, it's not gonna be a personal favorite. However, the formula of this is magnificent. So if you have a good color match, this is an amazing, amazing bronzer. I really love the formula here. However, the Syrah is just slightly creamier. Uh, the, the Hermes feels more silky. The Syrah feels more like velvety, creamy texture. So depending on which one you prefer, uh, you know, they're both great formulas. The Syrah has edged it out for me with the formula and the color but I absolutely wanted to mention this because it is so amazing if you have a good color match. Now, since that is not going to be a great match for me, my runner up in preference out of the new ones that I picked up this year would be the Pat McGrath in Nude Honey. So let me just show you this. You can see it's kind of in between the Surratt and the Hermes shade and color, a little bit closer to the Surratt. So this is definitely a better color match for me. I think it's a really great bronzer as well. So that's Pat McGrath in Nude Honey. Moving on to face palettes. We actually had quite a few face palettes that came out this year. My favorite is going to be the Viseart Fleurette Amour palette. And I love the pink and the purple cheek shades, mixing those together and this quartet in particular, this shade here. Let me go ahead and swatch that. Actually, I'm gonna swatch that over here so you can see how that compares to the Suku 105. You can see I definitely have you know, a vibe, <laughs> definitely similar colors. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And you know, the formulas on here are great. This is compact, great for travel. This would be my number one face palette. For number two, uh, runner up, I decided to go with the Hourglass. This is the uh, Ro Diffuse Rose Edit. So I really like how we have a face powder, a blush, and a highlight. All three of these shades work very well for my skin tone. And, you know, I just, I think it's a really nice palette. This, I was having a really hard time between this one and the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the beautifying face palette in Pillow Talk for Pale Medium. I decided not to go with this one because, you know, this is just blush and highlight. I feel like, you know, in that case, it was better to go with this one because you've got the face powder in here as well. So it's just, it, it covers a little bit more, more bases there. All right, so for eyeliners, you know, I had to say there weren't any, well, there were some new formulas I tried, but they didn't make it to favorites. Um, but my favorites were actually two Victoria Beckham ones this, this time. So we have Smoky Quartz, which I wear pretty much every day. That's what I'm wearing right now. Let's put these up here. You can see it's a beautiful, like shimmery taupe. And then this new one for the summer in Electric Blueberry. You know, I love these bright blue shades and they're creamy, easy to use. Formula-wise, my favorite is still the Sisley Fetal Coal Star, and they did come out with a new shade, but that came up in third place. So, um, yeah, these are going to be my favorites for 2023 so far. Now, for eyeshadows, it was really hard to narrow this down to, you know, a, a true favorite and a runner-up. My true favorite, I had to go with these Suku palettes. So we have 125 and 126. I couldn't really pick between the two of them. Um, you know, I just think they're both gorgeous and I love how Suku included duochromes here. Let me just go ahead and swatch these. Unfortunately, these were, or are limited edition, so they're pretty hard to see. That first shade is just like, um, just a shimmer. So you can't really see too much of that. And then we have this beautiful multi-chrome, uh, shade here or duochrome that kind of goes to this more like rich taupe, maybe with a little bit of a reddish tint to a green. So it's not really your true green red flip, um, you know, because it's definitely much more subtle, more neutral. This one here is the 126. 
and we've got these beautiful like more purpley mauve tones and this duo comb here let me put it there you can see we have more of a purpley pink flip and yeah absolutely gorgeous so those are my favorite for runner-up it was really hard there were so many great palettes that came out so i had to really think about which ones i would reach for the most and honestly it's the dior eden rock so this is just a great like neutral color story this is still the older formula of the shadows i have to say i don't really use this like orangey shade much but these other four i use quite a bit so these I just think are really beautiful. So that's the bottom three here. And then let me go ahead and just do the orange. There's that peachy orange and the ivory. It's just such a great everyday palette. And the blue gives you a nice pop. So those are going to be my favorites for the eyeshadow so far. Moving on to lips. You know, I couldn't really do just two lip products per se. I had to break them into categories. So starting off with lip gloss, my favorite is are the new Jimmy Choo lip glosses. And I've actually picked up uh, quite a few more of these. So I'll have to share those sometime. But this one, you know, this is like my go-to shade. This one here is 005 Rose Blush. I love these because they are beautiful, glossy, comfortable and they have such amazing longevity i mean you wouldn't even imagine a gloss lasting as long as these do so i mean it's just an incredible product so these are my number one followed by the new suku glosses so this is the suku treatment wrapping lip this one here is shade number five this is a permanent product and this is another like go-to shade for me now this is not going to have that longevity that you get from the uh, Jimmy Choo. This is going to be a thinner gloss. It gives you that shine. Some of them are very light and give you more of just like a shimmery, shiny lip. Others are going to give you more color like this one, but this has more of your traditional wear time. However, it is, you know, it has some ingredients in there that help improve hydration of your lips. So sorry if you can hear the thunder. We're in a thunderstorm right now. Now for lipsticks, we have so many different formulas that I couldn't just pick one. So I tried to pick one for different formulas. So we've got our Sheer Velvets. Givenchy came out with new shades in the Sheer Velvet. This one here, number nine. Where can I put this? This one here is a favorite. And you can see it's just going to be a light, peachy nude kind of shade. Just a great everyday shade. So number nine, that is definitely up there. Now, for fun colors, I couldn't skip the new Dries Van Noten lipsticks. So we've got these two like lavender shades. Well, we've got a light lavender here, and then we have like a deep purple. And whether you wear these on their own, or if you, and the purple here is a matte, by the way, a velvet. Or if you mix these with different colors to give them a different hue, like I love mixing them with pinks and reds. Uh, you know, they're just gorgeous. They're just absolutely beautiful shades. For lip balms, I do have two kind of ones I wanted to include. We have the new Hermes in 27 Rose Confetti. And let's see, we'll put this one here. You can see it's just kind of a light sheer pink. And it will get a little bit brighter as it sits. We'll come back to that one. And then the Guerlain Kiss Kiss B Glow in 129 Blossom Glow. We'll put that one right next to the Hermes. And just beautiful. I wear both of these like, well, I'll wear one of them every day. So those are my two go-tos. All right. I just had to jump in for a second. It's late at night and I'm editing and I realized I forgot to include liquid lipsticks. So my favorite is actually the new Armani Lip Maestro Satins. This is, you know, they have a lot of great colors, but this one here is number nine. And I love these. They're more of like your vinyl lip texture. They stay really well. They've got a beautiful shine to them. They're comfortable. Absolutely love them. My runners up are actually the Clay de Poe. This one, they have a bunch of different finishes, matte, satin, the shimmers. This was 120 current. I've been wearing this one a lot recently, just kind of like in a light layer. It doesn't, doesn't swatch very well over my veins there, but um, this one is current. So I like to wear this one kind of like dabbed on lightly and then putting one of the shimmer glosses. Actually, this is the one that I use the most right now. This is Makara. 
which is number 302. So I've been pairing the two of these together quite a bit recently. And those are gonna be my favorites for liquid lipsticks. And then for like everyday rosy nudes, I had to include the Hermes in number 19 satiné, Rose Bruyere. Let's put that one here, just gorgeous. And whether you have this or this is very much like the Cherry Blossom shade from Guerlain. This is number 63, uh, Rosy Bloom from Guerlain. You can see how close those two shades are. They're very similar to each other. Uh, you know, those would be my picks then for kind of like an everyday rosy lipstick. Uh, those I absolutely love. So that's it for the lipsticks. Lip liners, I didn't really have anything new this year, so nothing really to claim there. Let's just move on to brushes. And I didn't feature a lot on my channel, so, you know, I wanted to go through the ones that I particularly featured, and they happen to be the ones that, that were favorite so far anyway. We have the Sonia G Sheer Buffer. This is kind of a game changer brush if you don't already have something like this because it is the Fusion Bristles. So we have a mix of undyed goat hair, two different types of synthetic bristles. So it's soft, but it can be used with any type of medium. So liquids, creams, products. You can use this to put on a sheer layer of foundation or like a skin tint. You can use it for blush and bronzer, illuminators and so forth. But this is really gonna sheer out the products and it is just, it's wonderful, you know, especially for, you know, fair skin. If you are using a product that's a little bit deep and you wanna get just a lighter wash, this makes it so much easier than having to be super, super careful. So Sheer Buffer, this would be my number one. And then I wanted to mention the What's Up Beauty brushes. So I didn't pick a particular favorite per se, but I wanted to mention, you know, their eye brushes. I think the R106 is probably the one that I use the most. This one here is the R109. But what I like about them is they are undyed go hair. They're really easy to use, easy to clean, and they have smaller sizes. So I think that's really the detail there that really draws me in with these is that they're their sizes, they offer much smaller sizes than many of your traditional eye brushes. So it's great for detail work or for people with smaller eyes. So yeah, those would be my runner up. So those are all of my mid-year favorites. I'd love to know what you've been loving so far this year. Where would you rank things? Please share down below in the comments. And we have so many more things to go through this year. So we'll see how all of these things land at the end of the year. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It means a lot. Thank you so much for all of your support and I will see you very soon. Have a great day.